Welcome back, friends. It's good to see you. We're going to be continuing looking in the book of Matthew. And so here's our scripture for the day. It comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 through 17. Jesus clears the temple. Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out all the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the tables of money, changers, and the chairs of those selling doves. He said to them, the scriptures declare, my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. The leading priests and the teachers of religious law saw these wonderful miracles and heard even the children in the temple shouting, praise God for the son of David. But the leaders were indignant. They asked Jesus, do you hear what these children are saying? Yes, Jesus replied. Haven't you ever read the scriptures? For they say, you have taught children and infants to give you praise. Then he returned to Bethany where he stayed overnight. The passage that we just read can actually be found in two other books in the New Testament. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at those as well. One of them can be found in Mark chapter 11, 15 through 19. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were, bull, were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it into a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. The other one can be found in Luke uh, chapter 19, verses 45 through 48. When Jesus entered the temple courts, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it because all the people hung on his words. I want you to go ahead and think of a time that you were mad. You can pause the video if you want to, you can write it down. Think about what happened. Was it somebody else who made you mad or was it just an event that made you mad? What happened when you were mad? I know when I was younger, I was mad at my siblings quite often. We would usually start fighting. And what would we do when we were mad? We would start yelling at each other. And if it was my sister that I was arguing with or who I was mad at, I would sometimes take my shoes out of my closet and chase her around the house. It's not the nicest thing to do, but that was ways that I showed my sister that I was mad at her. <laughs> um, and in this passage, you know, Jesus is mad. And why is Jesus mad? It doesn't say, it does say that why he is mad, but they don't completely, you know, they don't tell you why they're mad. They just give hints. The temple was in Jerusalem. And this was a place for all people to come and worship God, you know, to pray, to have time with God. But how is one supposed to have time with God and worship God when there's so much noise going around? Have you ever tried to do homework or do a project or read a book maybe and there's people in the same room as you and they're making a lot of noise? It's really hard to focus, don't you think? And so the fact that people were, you know, just walking through the temple, it was just a really loud and noisy place. It wasn't a peaceful place. And this was a place, like I said, to worship God. And the fact that a lot of people were buying and selling animals for sacrifice meant that this was starting to look more like a market, not a place of worship. And the people who were, you know, selling the animals and exchanging coins for the current currency, they were probably not giving people a very fair price. And so he says in all three of the versions, he goes, you know, my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. And that kind of, that kind of says, you know, these people were being cheated. They were being, you know, they were stealing more money than what they needed to. And so Jesus, like I said, is very mad through all of this. And does Jesus have a right to be mad? 
yeah, he does. You know, his, this house, um, this temple that was made for worship was not being used properly. And so sometimes uh, my sister would take my clothes out of my closet without asking me. And so, I, and so that was one of the reasons that I would become mad with her because she was taking something. She was, you know, maybe kind of stealing something from me that did not belong to her and she did not ask. I didn't think it was very fair. And that made me mad. Um, and that's one of the emotions that Jesus um, is dealing with in these passages. So here are some pictures. You know, we kind of looked at three different versions of this story. And so here are some pictures that kind of, you know, what people imagine what that would have looked like. In the first picture, you can see he's the money is just flying off the table. Um, here, you know, he's kind of whipping the people and the animals, trying to get them out of the temple. Um, same as the third picture, you know, people are kind of running. They're probably kind of like, you know, what is he doing? You know, what, what it, they might not understand why he's mad. But yet still in the scriptures, you know, they say that people came and he healed them and the children were praising him. And this made, you know, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees not very happy um, because he was kind of, you know, disrupting in this area that they didn't really see was maybe nothing was really going wrong in their eyes. But Jesus saw that it was being misused. So we're going to do an activity um, to end this lesson. And we're going to kind of do a Mad Lib together. So here's the outline of the Mad Lib. So what I want you to do is go ahead and write down your name. You're also going to need to think of a place, a thing, a number, uh, animals, plural. So a couple animals. Um, and then let's see what else. Yeah, and then a, a man's name. So... This, you, you know, you could just put in a random name, a random place, but I want to make this activity more personal. So for me, I actually filled this out with something that I've done, a sin. And you might be thinking, how does sin have to do with any of this? We're talking about Jesus' anger. Well, the temple was used for a place for people to come worship God, but also to make sacrifices because that is what they used to do. If they sinned, they would make a sacrifice to God so that they could be forgiven, right? And so we're going to kind of put ourselves into the scenario as if we were at the temple offering a sacrifice to God because of something that we did. So go ahead and think of a name and think of a time that you sinned. Something, uh, a time when you did something wrong. Maybe it was calling somebody a name. Maybe it was taking something that didn't belong to you. Maybe it was, you know, hurting a sibling because they made you mad. Anything like that, okay? And then go ahead, I want you to go ahead and fill in these blanks. And then you'll eventually come up with your own mini story as if you were at the temple that day or any other day. So I'll go ahead and give my example. One day, Miss Mia was going to the temple to make a sacrifice, um, which is something you give to God. It can, because, it can be because you want to worship God or it can be because you have done something wrong. And for Miss Mia, it was because she did something wrong. She stole a toy from the eye doctor. And that is actually true. When I was younger, um, I went to the eye doctor and they had these really cool toys and I really wanted them, but they weren't mine. And so one day when I left the eye doctor with my mom, I stuck a toy into my jacket and took it home for me. I didn't have the right to do that. That was stealing. That was bad. That was a sin. I sinned. I don't have that toy anymore because it was a while ago, but every now and then I still think about that um, because I remember just feeling really, really bad about that. I did not feel good about that. When Miss Mia got to the temple, the priest, Richard, went out to meet him, went out to meet her, and he heard about the stolen toy. He told Miss Mia she would need to bring 12 sheep. Miss Mia was in shock. 12 sheep? So Miss Mia went out into the open temple grounds to visit, to visit the target. It was right in the temple. This was going to make it easy to find those 12 sheep. But easy turned out to be expensive. Miss Mia was in shock. It was going to, co to cost gold coins, twice as much money as it should be. What was Miss Mia going to do? So try to imagine that. Take your sin that you wrote down, that you thought about, and think about, you know, if you went to the temple and they said, oh, you're going to need three doves or 
five sheep, four goats in order to make this sacrifice, in order for God to forgive you? What if you don't have the money or the animals or anything like that? It can be really expensive, right? And so Jesus that day, you know, he turns over the tables. He does not like this. And this, this part of the story of Jesus's life is this is leading up um, to his crucifixion, right? And so Jesus dies on the cross. He makes the ultimate sacrifice. He pays the ultimate price so that we don't have to do this anymore. We don't have to go to a temple. We don't have to make sacrifices because he has already forgiven us and it costs us nothing. The only thing that we need to do is we need to go to him. We need to confess of what we did. We need to say we're sorry and we need to ask him, you know, to come into our hearts and to help us make the right decisions. So I actually wrote my sin down on a post-it note. You could do a piece of paper, anything like that. And what I want you to do after you're done filling out this story, you can either write your sin on a separate piece of paper or you can fill out this story, right? Then what I want you to do is to take it and I want you to go ahead and just rip it, right? And then throw it away. Because that is what Jesus does with our sins. He takes them and he just throws them away. You know, he, he talks to us, he hears us, but then he also forgives us because he loves us. And all we need to do is go to him. We don't need to offer 12 sheep, five doves, three goats, or, you know, pay 500 gold coins in order for him to forgive us. All we need to do is to bring our sin to him and to ask for forgiveness and he will give it to us. See you next time, friends.